Now, if we look at the staging for the colon cancer, you have to look at the T and M. When the tumor infiltrates the submucosa, that's a T1. When it infiltrates the muscularis propria, that's T2. When it invades the muscular propria and also the perirectal tissues, that's the T3. Whenever it includes, uh, infiltrates the surface of the visceral peritoneum, it's a T4A. When it invades the adjoining structures, that's a T4B. Similarly, for the lymph nodes, if these lymph nodes are in, in the regional uh, distribution of the the same that's an n1a uh, if it's outside those regional uh, lymph nodes uh, more than four then it's an n2 disease and uh, the non-regional lymph nodes or uh, adjoining structures lung or uh, liver that's a metastatic disease for the same so tumors usually disobey the rules but generally that this is the way uh, it features for right colonic tumors when you have to suspect a patient who has an anemia a patient who has an abdominal mass a pain usually right colon tumors doesn't present with any change in the bowel habit and they never usually present with obstruction on the other hand any tumor in the splenic flexure descending colon sigmoid colon rectum most of them presents with obstruction. Most of them presents with a rectal bleeding. Most of them presents with a change in the bowel habit. So the presentation of the clinical features do direct us as what sided tumor it is. The most easily investigation that is, is colonoscopy and the biopsy. In biopsy, you have an endoscopic criteria suggested for a malignancy in a polyp. When, when in, in a polyp, you look at the adherence, you look at the ulceration, friability, that's a, a, a polyp turning into a cancer for it. There is a, a histopathological classification for adenocarcinomas, adenosquamous carcinomas, spindle cell carcinomas, squamous cell epidermoid carcinomas, undifferentiated carcinomas. But therapeutically, it doesn't have much implications for it. The staging evaluation includes the clinical examination, whether uh, there is any visceral, visceral megaly, hepatomegaly, lymphadenopathy, ascites, or any synchronous tumors, you have to look specifically for the uh, hereditary stigmas for the same, any ovarian, breast, endometrioid cancers. CT scan is usually most appropriate in order to detect a metastatic spread to the liver and the complications associated with it, either perforation, fistulas, obstruction, the MRI of the abdomen. The clinical benefit of the routine CT scan is controversial and it's usually not recommended. The routine use of PET CT is also not recommended as an initial diagnosis as it does not modify the treatment approaches in most of the patients. The pre-op CA levels is very essential. The prognostic factors that includes uh, the category one where you have to find out as those factors which have, have a prognostic imp implications and have definite treatment implications also. Hello? Uh -huh. Ajay. So category one is the TNM categories of the current staging, which are classified together as category one, the blood or the lymphatic vessel invasion, the residual tumor following the surgery with the curative intent and elevation of the preoperative CEA levels. The category 2A is the tumor grade, that is uh, whether the radial margin status for the resective uh, resection of the specimens with the non-peritoneal surfaces, the residual tumor in the resection segment following new adjuvant therapies. The category 2B is the histological type and the mutations associated with it, MSI, high degree of MSI, loss of heterozygosity of 18Q, tumor borders involving the uh, configuration, whether it's infiltrating or pushing borders. The category 3 is the DNA content, all other molecular markers, except for the loss of heterozygosity, perineural invasion, microvascular density, tumor cells, associated proteins, carbohydrates, peritumor fibrosis, peritumor inflammatory response, focal neuroendocrine differentiation. Category four is the tumor size, gross tumor infiltrations. So for, for a carcinoma in a polyp, usually when they are benign adenomas as well as severe dysplasias or carcinomas in situs. They can be effectively managed by a polypectomy. 
Endoscopic resection is a reasonable alternative to a radical surgery for a favorable risk early stage colon cancer. The presence of any of these factors should consider for a radical surgery as they are highly indicated of a residual cancer and a nodal metastasis, whether it's a poorly differentiated histology, a lymphovascular invasion, cancer at the risk of resection or the mar margin positivity, invasion into the muscularis propria, that's the T2 lesion, invasion carcinoma arising in a sessile uh, with unfavorable features, example, lower third submucosal penetration, lymphovascular invasion, poor differentiation. The goal of the surgery is always the wide resection of the involved segment of the ball together with the removal of its lymphatic drainage. The extent of the colonic resection is determined by its blood supply and the distribution of the lymph nodes. The resection margin should include at least 5 cm on the either side of the tumor, although water margins are usually preferable, but it includes the obligatory ligation of the arterial blood supply. Laparoscopic approaches have now a received a wide acceptance for the several types of surgical procedures of major abdominal surgeries. Laparoscopic colectomy can be safely carried out for colon cancers, particularly for the left-sided cancers. For right-sided colonic cancers, the benefit is less obvious since anastomosis must be hand sewn, which requires a laparotomy. The long-term oncological results for a laparoscopic colectomy are similar to those with the conventional approach. The advantages of laparoscopy over the convention includes the reduced length of the hospital stay and However, laparoscopic requires a technically experienced surgeon's uh, lack of serious abdominal adhesions due to major previous abdominal surgeries and no other locally advanced disease, acute bowel obstructions or perforations. Obstructive colorectal cancers can be treated in one or two stages. The two stages process includes the colostomy followed by colonic resections or the Hartman procedure followed by colostomy closure and anastomosis. An alternative is a one-stage procedure with either subtotal colectomy and iliorectal anastomosis. In unselected cases, segmental resections after intraoperative colonic lavage. Endoscopic stenting can be used to leave obstruction from the rectosigmoid and cancers and can allow subsequent one-step resections. Obstructive right cancers can be treated by colonic resection and immediate anastomosis. So that's the lymphatic drainage for the, the cancers, the right-sided and the left-sided colectomy for the malignancies. And followed by it, there is a role of adjuvant therapy. In stage one, no adjuvant. In stage two, uh, uh, subgroups, you have to look for uh, depending upon the lymph nodes and based on the prognostic factors. The clinical factors, whether upfront the obstruction or perforation was present, what's the differentiation, whether the lymphovascular invasion is there, neuro invasion is there, what's the depth of the invasion, it's a T4A, it's a T4B, and most of them definitely prescribe an adjuvant chemotherapy for the same. Uh, depends upon what high risk stage 2 it is there, whether the MSI stability is there or not, um, the obstruction initially was there or not, the lymphovascular invasion is there, the PNI is there or not, the T4 primary is there, whether the adequate number of the lymph nodes are removed, whether it's less than 13 or more than 13, whether the perforation was there or not, you also prescribe the adjuvant chemotherapy. And if you look at uh, the five-year observed survival as per the stage, for a stage 2A, 67% do make up to the five years. For stage 2B, again, around 61 make it to the five years. For stage 2C, around 46% do make to a five-year mark. And for a th 3A, 71% do make up to the five-year mark. 3B make up to the 55-year, 55% uh, uh, 55 tend to make up a mark. 